Hey there everybody, Stuart here from uh, The Talent Equation. Um, this week I've got a slightly different um, episode for you. It's um, an Ask Me Anything episode. I quite often do these um, when I'm walking uh, Flo, my dog. But uh, I've been having a few problems with the audio, so I thought I'd do a video and then also put it out on the podcast as well. Um, question came in um, from a listener. And by the way, if you're interested in um, getting a question answered, then... Um, uh, the best way to do that is to uh, is to reach out to me on the website. Um, uh, I try and answer as many as I can. I don't always have that uh, that possibility. I don't always have the chance to do so. But um, uh, I definitely will try. If there's an in if there's an interesting question or something that I think that uh, warrants an answer, then uh, you know I'll try and uh, reply this way. Uh, if I can't reply uh, in text directly, and. Um, uh, I do prioritise the ones who come in from uh, supporters. So uh, there's a number of different ways of supporting the show. You can go, uh, you can go full out, and uh, and you can become a, a part of the conclave, which is the sort of inner circle, learning circle that uh, we've got, which is a social learning space that we that I convene with coaches from all over the world, where we get together to discuss kind of challenges and issues that we're all facing and co-create some of the solutions. Um, but equally, you know, there's there's a number of other ways as well. Um, you know, uh, the conclave comes with a little bit of financial support because there's obviously some work involved in convening and pulling that together. Um, and basically, it's the equivalent of uh, us sitting down over a cup of coffee, equivalent price, um, posh coffee, because, you know, we like good coffee. Um, but it's basically the equivalent of doing that once a month. That's really what, what that sort of contribution is. But there are other lower tiers as well. I don't want to make money an issue uh, to stop people learning. But other, but otherwise, lots of other ways to support the show as well, which is just to share it, you know, share it, um, you know, retweet, become a subscriber, um, you know, so come over and you can get my blog posts and um, ramblings and new podcasts direct into your inbox so that you don't miss anything like that. Um, and then obviously just telling all your friends about it. There's lots of lots of different ways of doing so. Um, so anyway, on to the um, on to the AMA, um, the Ask Me Anything. This question uh, came in from uh, Kieran O'Sullivan, who said, uh, Hi, Stuart, question on coach education and coaching courses. If we are asking our tutors to guide a games approach or a constraints-led approach on coaches, shouldn't the tutor syllabus reflect the same? I'm just looking over manuals and the syllabus from uh, the sport he's involved with in, uh, in, over in Ireland. And he says, and we're doing an update and a revamp. Most of what I'm seeing is 60 minute modules on team uh, offense or attack, 45 minutes on individual defense, defense or defending. As examples, my thoughts would be that we are underpinned by principles of constraints led, etc. And we teach concepts like, you know, dynamic 1v1 or 3v3, co-adaptability, coaching offense, defense simultaneously. Uh, would appreciate any thoughts you have. My mind is racing. So it's been a long overdue response. Really good question, actually. Lots of uh, lots of angles to go down here. Um, one thing I want to say uh, as a kickoff is that um, I think in general, um, if you look across the vast majority of sporting coach education content in the in the uh, in the syllabus, what you'll see is there's very little, if I'm honest. Um, uh, communicate particularly in the early um, aspects of the course there's very little information about uh, skill acquisition in particular and even approaches related to skill acquisition um, and so what you'll generally see um, if there is any information about skill acquisition it'll be quite limited like maybe a sort of shortish part of a two and a half day course or something along those lines uh, and it might talk about some of the sort of classical information processive or cognitive approaches you know might talk about going from unconscious com uh, incompetence towards conscious competence you know in a kind of traditional linear fashion um you know uh, or going towards automatic um those sorts of things you might have that in there but but not a lot in general what you'll also see in coach education courses is a lot of technique led some content some stuff about you know engagement and approaches and techniques and things like that but in general what you see is quite a lot related to the techniques of the game um and the idea being implicitly whether it's implicit implicitly or explicitly the content is leading towards a kind of technique led approach by quite a lot of coaches the idea being is that the early stages of coach education are designed around 
uh, teaching technique or providing technical information to novice players in theory. Also, when you look at coach education uh, frameworks, you see a pretty linear framework as well, you know, going from a novice working with novices to an elite or a, a, a level four or whatever, whatever kind of dis designation that exists and that is associated with high performance so the assumption being then that the high performing coach or the high is also working with the high performing athletes or the high performance athletes whereas in reality um, you can be a high performing coach working with children there are you know there's bet there are more expert children's coaches than others and so actually you need to consider or we need to consider the ways in which we can provide that kind of um you know, kind of information as well. But those systems don't look, don't reflect that. They just suggest that the only way to be designated as an expert, if you like, or designated as a master coach is to be working in, a, in an environment, which is why the vast majority of coaches follow pathways. Another reason why the path, the performance narrative has become so prevalent in, in our world. Sorry, got interrupted by a co-worker there. Classic. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so what I was saying was, so you, what you see is you see these linear systems and that's a major issue as far as coach education systems. And you see that reflected in the content as well. So the content is often um, utilising traditional linear approaches um, to coach education, usually quite instructive. Um, I remember distinctly being on a, a you know, a, a level one course um, in rugby a number of years ago and... Um, I remember that I had a discussion with my tutor because I didn't explicitly check for understanding because that's one of the coach education criteria. And I said, but I didn't need to check for understanding because the I was observing the athletes and they were demonstrating their understanding by acting in accordance. Uh, but you still need to check for understanding to meet the criteria. So again, you know, that's still quite a sort of traditional, explicit, uh, you know, quite directive approach. Um, so uh, now, so if you take, so you've got the content element, right? So inside the, inside the course content are fairly traditional linear approaches. You, I, I would very rarely see kind of constraints that approaches within coach education content. Um, now there are more and more sports actually who are bringing aspects of say a constraints led approach into early stage coach education. Um, but not necessarily referring to it as that and not calling it that, just utilising some of those principles as a means by which to engage. Hockey, for example, um, you know, utilise something around the, go the golden thread where they talk about, you know, having, um, you know, for it, and the golden thread being a reference point. They have things like, you know, um, you know, mostly about games, lots of decisions and all those sorts of things, which are simple ways of influencing get practice design so that it is more in line with, say, a constraints led approach than not. So we're seeing that beginning to emerge, but not wouldn't say it was necessarily widespread. Now, so then what about then the methods then that the tutor, so to speak, or the coach educators use in coach learning? which is where this fundamental question comes from. Do, for example, we see tutors utilising, say, or demonstrating or providing coaches with, say, a even a contrast between a more traditional, um, you know, kind of prescriptive, instructive, technique-led approach versus um, constraints-led, ecological-inspired, games-based, etc., whatever you want, non-linear uh, approaches to coach education. Do you even see the chance to explore both options? You don't. Do you get a chance to practice them? I've never seen it. Uh, never heard of it, to be honest. And I work with quite a few, well, a lot of governing bodies. So I haven't ever seen this in their curriculum and content. Maybe it's happening. I don't know. But I would I would have thought I would have come across it before, a little bit more widespread if it was in there. Um, do the tutors themselves or the educators themselves, I mean, calling them a tutor in a kick -off, for a kickoff is... Maybe not the right uh, description, you know, maybe kind of learning facilitator, learning architect, whatever it might be. Um, uh, coach developer, perhaps um, something along those lines, as opposed to using this word educator, you know, because it aligns to T 
teaching and technique and, and not technique but but teaching and instruction uh, tutor definitely aligns to tutoring and providing the providing of information i'm not saying the providing of information is necessarily the is necessarily wrong in a course let's say now courses themselves are fundamentally problematic however let's just say that we're doing a course it's two and a half days and then if you were just even ask the question of what is the balance between provision of information like the provision of information from the leader of the learning experience i.e the tutor in this case and how much information do they provide to the coaches um, versus how much is it about coach learning through experience um you know kind of gaining feedback um <clears throat> you know uh trying different ways you know so just having a much more explorative um discovery led learning experience then i think you'll probably find that the vast majority is sort of content driven and it's about the provision of information um now if it's not even if there are like let's say it's 50 50 practical between you know, kind of theoretical information being imparted through presentations and chalk and talk style delivery, new information provided um, and practical in a two and a half day course or a two day course or something along those lines. What you'll probably see is it's predominantly sorry. No, you'll see that even in the practical space, let's say it's 50 50, even in the practical space, you will probably find that the practical is still quite um, prescriptive you will still see a requirement to have a linear plan so there's no uh, exploration or provision of uh, planning being done in a non-linear way you know a, uh, a kind of a more intention led uh, the creation of a learning environment and then we move with the athletes from that learning environment and we work with them on what they discover and explore you wouldn't even you wouldn't even see that as a concept maybe some people think that's beyond a beginner coach i genuinely don't agree i think it's absolutely within everybody's grasp you just have to be able to see it from that way from that perspective so even if it is uh even if you do have 50 percent practical which in general you might not. How much of that practical is led by tutors? How much of it is led by learners? How much of it is experiential uh, versus how much is it, you know, kind of demonstrated, for example, and all those sorts of things. I just reflect on my own coach education, you know, which I haven't done for a while, but the last time I was doing kind of a formal course, you know, even then quite a lot of the course required the coach, the coach educators to you know, kind of be at the forefront of that learning experience to provide demonstrations and things like that. Um, so should we be exposing, um, you know, coaches, should we should we actually, allow, should the uh, coach educators be providing, um, you know, kind of more of a showcase? Should they also be enabling coaches to experience different approaches um, and even experience the use of, say, the same method, instruction, but used in two different ways based on two theoretical principles. So an ecological approach to instruction, which might be an instruction that helps an individual to, to narrow the search space versus an instruction which gives an individual um, an action possibility, an effectivity, if you like, an action, an action capability it says do this with your body to do that. Um, or with this implement do this you know those two approaches and just even compare and contrast those just just exploring instruction as a as an approach and how you might use instruction in using different sort of theoretical paradigms it just wouldn't exist i'd be very very surprised if i found anybody doing that or anything along those lines and i would also be surprised i mean and part of the reason for that is is that you know do the do, are, are there that many of the tutor workforce who are knowledgeable and skilled enough around ecological principles to be able to apply them and to be able to utilize them i'm not 100 percent sure so so fundamentally um you know should there be more should there be more of this done well i would obviously say yes um and it's interesting isn't it there's a real imbalance in content there's an imbalance in the, the the way the delivery method used by tutors there's a real real imba imbalance in terms of the actual breakdown of the way the content is ordered in terms of information provision versus um 
the exploratory approach of coaches learning about their own capabilities and experiences, bringing their bringing themselves as individuals to a learning experience and all their experiences, and using them and allowing them as an individual to explore within the space. You know, not it's generally quite linear in the sense that everybody comes in and it's assumed that they're all from the same place. So they all get the same information, the same content, the same syllabus delivered to them, regardless of their particular background. And then the tutors just have to do a differentiation thing whilst trying to stay on track with this particular curriculum. So that in itself, so the way it's framed, the delivery methods and the approaches. And then finally, within that experience, even if there is a practical experience, is the practical experience designed in a, using an ecological lens as a means by which to facilitate learning? No. In general, I would say no. Uh, should there be more balance? Well, I would argue yes. Um, I, I often get accused um, of being unbalanced when I present, um, you know, kind of an ecological account to uh, through the work that I do through the podcast and through the videos I put out on the YouTube channel um, and through my blog posts and things like things like that. I get criticised by academics all the time saying you're unbalanced, you're providing one view, you're dogmatic. I don't believe I am unbalanced because there is already an imbalance. The imbalance exists within the majority of coach education design and delivery. And so this is a rebalancing of that by providing post-qualification content to coaches looking for different answers through the provision of lived experience and through the provision of other individuals who are exploring in the same in the same way and providing their lived experience and a combination of their lived experience and also some research that comes in that area. Because this isn't provide if this was provided in coach education in a balanced way, um, then I wouldn't probably need to be doing what I'm doing now. I would probably be talking about slightly different things in a different way. Uh, but this definitely provides that balance. So when people articulate or, you know, you put out clever memes on uh, on Twitter saying, oh, one approach to rule them all, um, you know, and describes that as, you know, kind of being, uh, like you say, like I said earlier, dogmatic or, um, you know, that that's not what this is about. This is about saying, look, here's an alternative area that you might want to explore if you're someone curious and looking for answers, because what you were provided in your coach education only gave you one perspective or a very limited perspective on this alternative approach. And that's how an awful lot of people, you know, come along these lines. So, they, so, so I, I very much reject the calls for balance. And if they do want to make calls against me for balance, then they should also be making the same calls of those people who design coach education systems to provide an equal amount of balance into coach education. Um, and I don't see academics doing that as, as readily. It's much easier to have a go at uh, bloggers and podcasters, isn't it? Um, anyway, that's a personal little rant I was just getting out of the way there because uh, there's a few people who are uh, who are, are within the academic community who really should be spending their time in a very different way, not making clever memes. But anyway, they have done and it gets up my nose. So I just thought I would share with you that. So anyway, um, the long and short of it, should we be doing more CLA and Coach Ed? 100%. Um, I genuinely believe it would be very interesting to see how some early stage coaches utilised and were able to sort of choose from these sort of mixed methods and understand different, the different sort of roots, ontological roots of these different ideas and how different methods can be used in different ways depending on how you view learning and who you're working with and all those sorts of things. If we're genuinely going to use this, it depends uh, perspective, then at the very least provide coaches with information about all the different the, the, the different ways in which they can approach learning, the different theoretical perspectives, and then we can then have the professional judgment to be able to define when it depends, how it depends, what it depends on. Because at the moment, just saying it depends to people who've only really been provided with in the main in the main one approach isn't good enough. It doesn't go far enough. It does need to be what it depends on. And we need clarity as far as that's concerned. It depends is not is not a comfort blanket. It does not provide anybody with anything apart from to say, you know, oh, well, you know, it's a bit complicated. Maybe you should read my papers. No, no, no that's not what it's about. People need answers and they've got problems right in front of them. And and they will find them in a range of different places. The most accessible ones will probably be the readily the, 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 the ones that they will go to. I have a particular perspective on that. I have some lived experiences that I share and I will continue to share those lived experiences because if it gives people some different ideas and different ways of doing things, then 
that's a great thing and, I, and well I believe that's a great thing I believe it's it's a value and certainly the feedback I get from people is that they want me to continue to do so so I will continue to do so um, and I won't be silenced by the thought police within academia because it's the worst in my opinion it's the worst kind of academic snobbery anyway there you go bit controversial perhaps um, prompted by uh, an important uh, an important question and I think there's one that a lot of people should be thinking about so uh, if you are designing coach education systems then maybe pause give it a think have a think about the different uh, approaches that you might take in the course to the learning experience for those individuals and find a means by which to provide you know the appropriate level of balance but also the appropriate level of experience for those individuals depending on the level that they're at Hope that was valuable. As always, um, if you're interested, you know, if you found this uh, video useful, hit the subscribe button. Helps to helps to get more people to find out. Like, 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 share, 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 all of that jazz. Like people always say. Um, head over to talentequation.co.uk. You can sign up and subscribe. Uh, you can find the supporter thing. There's a Patreon button there as well. If you want to be, go further and join the conclave and become part of the social learning learning group that we have. Um, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you. And if you like this, hit something in the comments, uh, write to me. Got any further questions, by all means, send them through. Uh, I do like responding to questions. Uh, I think it's uh, you guys come up with the best questions, and I like to try and respond to them wherever possible. So uh, in the meantime, uh, have a good week, and I'll see you again soon.